You're welcome back from that short break. You're still on to Daybreak Africa this beautiful Monday morning. And just before I went on that short break, I said we'll be returning with our guest who will be joining us via Otioko. This morning, we'll be talking about the ongoing Gabon crisis as a youth suspends them among other African countries they've suspended due to military fallout. This morning, we'll be talking about a Gabon coup fallout, the ongoing coup that's in Africa with Emmanuel Adiriti. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Glad to have you on the show this beautiful Monday morning. The feeling is much longer. Great. So we don't waste much of our time. We'll go straight into the talking point. Africa seems to be, have been in the news for the past couple of months now we've seen the issue happen in Niger. we've seen that of sudan we've seen that and now we are seeing that we've seen that of zimbabwe and now we are seeing that of gabon and a brief note what do you have to say about uh the old issues happening between african countries ECOWAS, and just talk a little about your overview of the old crisis let me say first and foremost that um the old saga you know, um, both badly for Africa as a continent. Okay. Okay, and um, it is no longer news that um, the biggest problem across all of Africa, mm -hmm. you know, is a problem of um, leadership and structures. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Africa is a continent where rather than build lasting structures, you know, and then. Um, Strengthening the existing structures, what we have, you know, is, is a system that um, allows corruption to thrive. Mm. You know, otherwise you wouldn't you wouldn't have situations where um, democratically elected governments are overthrown by the military, and then you have um, the um, citizens of that particular nation, you know going out on the street and to be listen, you know, uh, like, you know, that's the point that we say that um, they're in support of the actions of the military. military. Mm. You know, yes, while um, we, we all know that um, military leadership in the 21st century, you know, is not um, where we should be, it's not something that should be linked yes. with any nation in this time, you know. And all that, but it's a sad reality, and um, it seems to be spreading across mm. like wildfire. Yeah. No, Speaking um, of, uh, so sorry, John. You talked about something the other time. You said it is appalling seeing military take over democratically elected president. Now, take a look at what happened in Gabon. The president seemed to have been ruling the family now and the president seems to have been really for 43 years and then a couple of african presidents seem to have been really for as far back as 1979 we have that of cameroon we have equatorial guinea we have Eritrea, we have dr congo among others so according to democracy are they supposed to spend that long on seat as the president we have the likes of 43 years 36 years and the least is 26 years as a president um, well, it's an, it's an abnormality, you know, and um, it's, it's something that um, happens only in this part of the world. Uh, if we are practicing a monarchical system of um, governance, then you can say that um, it is the no, no. That governance is the inheritance of the yes. royal line or something. Mm -hmm. No, but if you're practicing democracy and you have the proper structures in place, then there's no, it is unthinkable, mm. you know, that a particular family is able to remain in government for that long, like it is their family inheritance mm -hmm. or something, you know, which is why, you know, there's a saying that power corrupts and that um, absolute power corrupts absolutely, mm. Mm. you know, and the only thing that allows for these things to happen is when there is a decay in the structural system of any society. Yes. You know, you have, you know, have, in Africa, you now have, you have societies where the, the, the structures are not, um, are not balanced. They, yes. they are too, they are too porous, you know, and even when you have certain laws in place, enforcement has always been an issue. Yes. All across Africa. This is not peculiar to the Francophone um, countries where this appears, these schools appear to be 
you know, happening at the moment. You know, it's something that's all across countries. Africa. My apologies for cutting into your line of thought. Most of the countries we are talking about here seem to have gotten their independence from Frank from France. Yes, that is yes, but that is the that is the way it is seeming at the moment. Mm. You know, but um, I can I can assure you, you know, that um, we've not seen the end of it. Mm. You know, it's it, it's seeming to me like this is only the beginning. Now there's there's um, a political undertone, you know, a geopolitical undertone. Yeah. You know, which is making it seem like um, these countries are trying to. Do to um, break free of the stronghold that um, the French seem to still have, you know, over them. Mm -hmm. But in reality, in reality, my take home from all of this, you know, is that the democratically elected government have not performed. They performed the low part. They've not bettered the lives of the populace. Yes. You know, which is why, you know, such a thing would happen and you have people coming out, you know, in their masses and celebrating mm. on the Celebrating, yes. And you believe in that the military has taken over. Mm -hmm. You know, let, um, let me paint a picture. Imagine that um, that um, something happens, God forbid, to our current president. Uh, and then rather than people going into mourn, you know, beginning to mourn and all that, you now have um, the opposite. You have... Mm. People across Jubilating. the streets of Lagos, across the streets of Cardo, you know, celebrating. Hmm. You know, it would only be a point as to something that is much more, yes. you know, than the activities of the of the um, military co plotters Mm. Now, um, with this now happening, and um, you know the whole of Africa is seeing this, uh, it is not just happening in one country. I uh, hear now that uh, the Ugandan president has even um, uh, also tried to uh, um, uh, devise some other measures by uh, demilitarizing uh, so many of the high chiefs in the military, that's uh, removing them and then putting new people, even Cameroon, even Nigeria. As it seems to be right yeah. now at, at, the, at the same point right now that uh, things like that are happening. Now, why is the, is it that the AU is condemning all these actions? Uh, because it is seen like the people seem to be enjoying what is happening and they are accepting it based on the fact that their countries are very rich in mineral resources and they are supposed to be rich. They are supposed to be well off, but mm -hmm. most of these countries are ranked uh, topmost in poverty. You know, why should the AU or the ECOWAS uh, frown at, uh, you know, these developments? Well, um, it, like, like I said at the, at, the, at the beginning, the best form of government is not a military government anywhere across the world. Mm. You know, uh, and um, it is democracy, you know, is on paper the best form of government any nation can have. You know, actually, it is at least to be the government of the people for the people by the by people. By the people. You know, but what is playing out in this country is that, uh, you know, it is seeming like it is government of a few. Hmm. Of a few. You know, a few. for, yes, of, of a select few. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, over every other person. So it is, it is not, um, it's not really government that is reflective of, you know, the intentions and the will of the people. Yes. You know, which is why you have people going out to jubilate. Mm. You know, so I think that what um, ECOWAS and then um, AU need to pay more attention to, you know, is um, electionary matters all across Africa. Mm. Do you understand? They need to, they need to take um, a step, you know, a little step above just of seven. Hmm. You know, because most of the observations that they do do not even really make any difference at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. You know, because they are usually careful in their words. For instance, we all know some of the incidents that happened during the past um, presidential elections in Nigeria. Uh, and it is still on record, you know, the statements that were put out by these um, separate bodies. You know, so I think that they need to become more active you know, in the electionary process, process, in ensuring that there's transparency every time there's an election to be held anywhere 
in Africa, let their, let, let's feel their impact more. Mm. You know, not just when there's a crisis and then the one who's left muscles and I, military power. Yes, yes. I do not think that that's the way to go. Now, yeah. now the involvement of the U European Union, mm -hmm. uh, the Americans and the rest of them, mm -hmm. now, because uh, the French government and even the West have been fingered in, in uh, some of these crises that is happening in Africa currently, and some of the ways the leaders continue to stay in power and they continue to support their ways. Meanwhile, they preach democracy, which they practice, you know, to the letter. You know, um, American pres an American president cannot stay there for more than the terms that is allocated yeah. for him to be in that seat. And democratically, he will be removed or he will be replaced mm -hmm. one way or the other. Or he will continue in power mm -hmm. for that number of and eight years for the American government. After eight years, that will be the end. He doesn't run for any other position anymore and he continues and subsequently in some other countries and in some other places like the uk the united kingdom they have continued to maintain both the monarchy rule of law and also the parliamentary rule of law but in africa it seems it's just anyhow you know somebody comes in today and um, the next thing they change a constitution they want a, a five-year term a seven years term and all on all like that in nigeria it almost happened when, when obasanjo was there uh, as the president and you remember that at some point when his term was about to wrap up he asked for First of all, it was a five-year term, but that did not work. And then uh, another, um, say he was looking for another third term, and that also did not work. That caused fracas between a president and his uh, deputy, you know, at the long run. And so many people saw that as, uh, wow, why should that happen? Now, these other African countries may not have the, um, the willpower. Their people may not have the willpower to be able to say no. Or some of these members of the cabinet of the SMB say no to some of this. And these people continue to do this sort of thing. So the involvement of the West, the involvement of, uh, you know, the Western powers, all of them into Africa. Don't you think that it's a, the, a, there comes a time when it, it is time right now for them to actually remove their hands from everything concerning both politically, economically from Africa? Uh, well, uh, um, you see, the, the, the truth of the matter is there's no smoke without fire. Yes. Mm. Okay, and um, one, would, one would wonder, okay, there's a Yoruba adage that says, one damn is the Bible says for me. In other words, um, they are a husband and wife are in their apartment and they are shouting at each other. Mm -hmm. You know, why is this the business of the neighbor downstairs mm. except there is a shared interest? Mm. You know, and then the, the fact that the, the EU, the European Union, is so interested and invested, mm. you know, is a pointer that um, there is more to this than meets the eye. Now, having said that, having said that, it is, it is common sense that. Um, the the fact that the people are rejoicing and they're on the streets now, you know, does not still change the fact, you know, that um, what is going on is bad. And remember that two wrongs do not make a right. Yes. yes. Two wrongs do not make a right. Yeah, what, what I feel that um, we need to fight for across Africa, including Nigeria, you know, the purported giants of Africa, you know, is building systems and structures that are independent of one another. You understand? We should be able to have a national assembly, you know, that is capable of not just threatening to impeach the president, but actually being able to impeach the president if the president steps out of the line legally. Mm. Without any so, other yeah. Western power infiltrating, yes, without anybody infiltrating that. into it. Without, yes, without any... You know, the, the, the thing is this, uh, we've, we've sold ourselves short on many grounds. We've signed so many deals out of greed, you know, rather than the, the common good of the people. You know, and that is why we are where we are. You know, you have, you have situations where the, the leaders, you know, across Africa, you know, have sold out mineral resources, they signed deals yes. that are supposed to last for 50 years, 100 years, you know, deals in perpetuity. Do you understand? All right, so these things are in place. 
and um, these Western bodies, these um, people that have interest, mm -hmm. know that if things go south, then who honors those deals that are in place? Mm -hmm. So one way or the other, they uh, get uh, to uh, it, you know, which is why you can hear voices, you know, from all across Europe say, no, it can't be like that and all of that. It's because there's an interest that does not meet their immediately. As this speaking of international community response to the ongoing coup in different African countries. Now, the president of Nigeria, which also doubles as the ECOWAS chairman, he totally condemned the acts that happened in Gabon. Now, we understand the fact that the military takeover was quite necessary based on what the people on the street are saying by showing how excited they are. But do you think the military would deliver? Do I think what military would be The military that took over the presidential seat in Gabon. Uh, like, like I was trying to point out earlier, okay. I am very, very confident historically that the jail would only be short-lived. Hmm. You know, because um, the, the, the fact remains that um, until, um, until things are done properly, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can never get, um, you cannot get better. No, so you do not build, you do not build them on on sand, and then expect that what you the structure, the type yes. of your building mm -hmm. will stand. stand. No, it's already on a faulty foundation. Now, I want to I want to ask a question. You know, because what you have said now, yes, um, uh, the military takeover may not is a very short-lived uh, administration. Mm -hmm. You know, it may not provide with that base, but then uh, the people seems to be you know happy. First of all, getting ah, a liberation. A now, liberation. I read a, a story yesterday evening or yesterday night, and it came as a shock. I've heard it before, but it came as a shock, and I checked the date, and I say I saw it is a real date. It happened in Aquaibom, and uh, that uh, some it was discovered that um, you know uh, some Chinese people were actually mining uh, this um, uh, you know implement used for making the Tesla cars. Like uh, uh, this, uh, making battery, yes, not uranium, uh, uh, is it ti uh, titanium or something mm -hmm. like that? There's a high deposit of it in Aquaibom, and it is being presently excavated by some Chinese companies. And what Nigeria had to do was to say, stop them and to say they don't have licenses. Now, who allowed these people in? Hmm. in first of all, does it not does it mean that in a very large expanse of land? Um, shouldn't the government be aware of it? The government of the state, yes. the government of the country uh, be aware of yes. such things. And then mm -hmm. why should uh, the raw materials be taken out of, out. The, out of the country? Why not the industries be built in those countries? Mm -hmm. So I think this is one of the things that is happening in Africa right now that is causing some of these coups. Because I believe if these people had their investments in the country, mm -hmm. If they have their investments in these countries, they build factories, they build everything, and they yes. employ all the same, the same uh, people. It, it, will boost the it will boost the revenue, it will boost the economy. So, um, with the way you just said this now, um, it, it is looking like, well, oh, they took over, but it's like, ah, uh, just trying to make the people happy you know on, on a short on a short term so but uh, some of them have promised to say why transitionally uh, they want to bring down a transitional a transition table that yeah. will bring in the right people, people. into power mm. so um the intentions of the military coming in now seems to be not like the intentions of, of the, the old the past military, the mili that, we military that we have witnessed before in this country or in africa um it seems like come there's a need there's a need for us to regrow Africa. So what's your thoughts on that? Well, um I I am not in support of um violence of any sort. Mm. Mm. I'm not in support of tools of any sort. Mm. I'm a I'm a person that believes in dialogue. Mm. I'm a person that believes in the rule of law. Mm -hmm. You know, and anything outside of that you know, goes against everything that I believe in. Now, having said that, I'm also someone that believes that um, the citizens of Africa, you know, need to have a, a side of peace in the world. I'm someone that believes that the, city, the citizens of Africa need to be able to raise their heads up high. Mm. You know, and um, we decide not to continue to be labeled developing countries 
or under developed countries. Mm -hmm. At all. You know, it is time that the people benefit from their resources directly. Mm -hmm. You know, it is time it is it is time that um, the natural resources you know benefit the citizens of a particular place before expatriates, before outsiders. It is it is appalling that you have petroleum resources and yet it is not affordable to the common man. It makes no sense. It is it is it is saddening. Imagine that you have that you have um, a mango tree, an orange tree, in your compound, and you have to beg before you are able to pluck from it. It does not make any sense. You know, so it is time that our, our leaders across board, across Africa, you know, look inward and begin to address their failure. Mm. And let us stop, let us stop them decorating offices, let us stop placing emphasis on offices, but let the emphasis be on systems and structures. Uh, we really, we really have to go right now. Uh, I'm so sorry to call to show. We really have to go right now. But on a final yes, note, what do you think ECOWAS body should do right? In not less than 10 seconds. ECOWAS AU. Mm -hmm. All they can do at this point is mediate. Hmm. But not in military. Militarily. That's my point. Mm. All right, I said very thank you to you, Adiriti Mano, for your time this Monday morning. Thank, thank you, you very much. Do enjoy thank the rest you so of much for coming on. Okay. And that was our guest, Adiriti Emmanuel, as we talked on the ongoing Gabon crisis, among many other issues going on in Africa as a whole. We'll go on the show break right now to return with the concluding part of Daybreak Africa. Please stay with us. <laughs>